Um, so I'd like to call the meeting to order and introductions. I know that's kind of hard, but um, I guess I can just uh, say your name and then you can say who you are and um, if you're representing somebody. So I'm Lisa Ridge, Monroe County Highway Director. Uh, Marge, Margaret? Margaret Clements, I'm the Commissioners of Monroe County Commissioners appointee and President of the Monroe County Plan Commission. Um, Kent? Uh, I'm here and I'm representing Bloomington Transit. Kent McKay. Hey. I'm here and I'm representing <clears throat> the council. Scott? Scott Robinson, uh, representing the mayor of city of Bloomington, John Hamilton. Nate? Hi everybody, Nate Nickel, city of Bloomington Public Works Department. Sarah? Sarah Ryder, Ben, chair of the CAC and vice chair of policy committee. Jason? Hi, Jason Bannock, representing IU. I'm in a, another Zoom right now with one of your commissioners, emergency management director. They look forward to seeing you at two. Thanks. Chris? Chris Wallman, representing NDOT. Hi, Chris. And Erica, is that, is she just basically for your IT? Oh, no, Hi, this Eric, is Erica's Federal Highway Administration. Oh, oh duh. Hi, everybody. This is Erica from Federal Highway Administration. Happy Friday. Thanks, Erica. I had a, 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 a blonde moment right then. So. <laughs> so, and then we have Pat Martin and Ryan Clemens, our great MPO staff. So I hope I didn't miss anybody. Um, so the second item is approval of the agenda. Move approval of the agenda. All second. second. Okay. Motion and many seconds. Um, I'm, we would have to take a roll call vote. vote. Yeah, that's right. I'd be happy to go through. Thank okay, you. Ridge. Yes. McDaniel. Yes. Wiltz. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Nickel. Yes. Ryder Band. Yes. Bannock. Yes. Samples. Not yet present. Gethins. Also He's not, not yet here. present. Wallman. Yes. Clements. Yes. That is nine zero. Okay. Penny is having trouble getting in. Let me. Um, okay. Today's Penny's birthday. And she was out to lunch with her husband. Oh, it is Penny's birthday? Yes, today is. Oh, okay. I don't see her here. I just now sent her the copy of the chat. Um, so maybe that'll work for her. Okay. Yeah, I don't um, see her. Otherwise, I'd let her in. Okay, you might watch for her. Okay. So next item is approval of the, of the minutes um, for January 8th, 2021. Lisa, I'll have to abstain on this one because I've missed the last meeting. Okay. Um, do we have move a motion? I move approval. And a second? Second. Thank you. And a roll call vote. Sure. McDaniel. Abstain. Wilt. Yes. Robinson. I abstain. I was not at the meeting. Nickel. Yes. Writer band. Yes. Bannock. Yes. Wallman. Yes. Clements. Abstain. Did anyone else join that I missed? I'll say yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Rich, thank you. I did miss you, and you've been here the entire time. <laughs> Is that a quorum? Do we? I'm not sure. I don't nine. Know. Yes. We do seven have is all. Seven is all we need. Yeah. Seven. And seven is all we need. We're we're fine. <laughs> and I count six zero three. All right. 
Thank you, Ryan. Uh, communications from the chair. I really don't have anything. Um, let's just pray that we're not really going to get 10 inches of snow come Monday because it's not going to have any place to go and because what we have now is not going to melt. So um, I do want to say a big kudos to the city of Bloomington, Monroe County, um, NDOT for all the hard work and hours that they put in in the month of February for clearing the roads. Um, it's been a very busy month for all of them. So um, reports from officers and their committees. Um, Citizens Advisory Committee. Yes, CAC met. Uh, and the only uh, item of business that we really transacted was to look at the survey that uh, we will be talking about later in this meeting, um, the community survey. And we noticed that in looking at how people actually moved themselves through this community, they'd kind of skip things like pedestrians and bicyclists and transit. So uh, we've asked that those be added to the survey. All right, thank you, Sarah. Um, next, Technical Advisory Committee. I, mean, I, I could... I can report on that. I mean, it, it was the same as Citizens Advisory Committee, only there were no comments on the survey on the, on the coordinated, what do you call it, coordinated human services public transportation plan survey. There were no comments on it. All, all of those came from the CAC. All right, thank you. Uh, next we have reports and I think, um, do we have Penny, are you on here? I don't see her. I saw a phone number, so I wasn't sure if it was her or not. I think that's Pam. Okay. Um, so reports yeah, from- This is Penny. Oh, this okay. This is Penny, hi. Hi. Hi, Penny. Hi. Happy birthday, Penny. Oh, it's not my birthday. It's Pam, <laughs> Pam. Pam's, Pam's birthday. Pam, Pam Samples' <laughs> birthday, yeah. yeah. Pam, happy birthday to you. <laughs> I'm really batting a thousand here today. <laughs> So um, reports from the MPO staff. Um, item A, Coordinated Human Services Public Transportation Plan. Okay, we, we presented to you a draft form of survey for the, this is an Indiana Department of Transportation 2021 survey for the Coordinated Human Services Public Transportation Plan. This is in our work program, has been in our work program for the last two years. We just haven't had time to do it because we've been doing the Metropolitan Transportation Plan. Anyway, the Department of Transportation approached us in December, asked if we would be objecting to a consultant coming in, a state paid consultant, no less, coming in and doing the plan itself. And I went, hallelujah, yes. Um, so the consultant sent us this survey. We ran the survey by uh, the three committees last month. Uh, the CAC knocked it out of the box by noting the survey did not include uh, pedestrians, bicycles, or scooters as modes of transportation. So I contacted the consultant, the consultant modified that uh, survey. The link is valid, which is in the packet itself. We will send out on Tuesday a broadcast email to everyone that we have an email address for on the three committees and beyond, uh, encouraging everybody to participate in the survey. And the survey will evaluate transportation not only in uh, the Bloomington metropolitan area, but also in Monroe County. And that's all I've got for that. Pat, Pat I, you said that the survey link is active. Yes. Uh, is this the final version of this? Yes. Survey? Okay, because I checked the link and I responded. So I was just wondering if I had to do it again. Yes, I, I responded to the link yesterday just to make sure and yes it's valid okay and recording yeah the results morning. results are recorded by the consultant for the indiana department of transportation we do not see the results whatsoever is that so a statewide survey they call it a statewide survey because they're taking all of the mpos and putting them all together okay. into one into one plan but ours <laughs> is discrete uh, but the, the cumulative results will be placed together in aggregate for the entire statewide plan. 
but there will be an individual plan for the Bloomington Metropolitan, Bloomington Monroe County Metropolitan Area. Do all 14 MPOs get a, an individual plan or is it just us? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank, thank you. Yes. Any other questions on that item? Um, fiscal year 2022 cost allocation plan. Okay, normally I would not share with you the cost allocation plan. Uh, this is something that we're required to put together for the preparation of our unified planning work program every year. And the cost allocation plan is, it's a technical accounting type of document. Uh, this year was unique for the MPO because the MPO is housed within the planning and transportation department. Engineering was in the planning and transportation department until January 1st. January 1st, the engineering department for the city of Bloomington is now a wholly independent department. That changed all of our costs dramatically in terms of not only salaries, but in terms of overhead and also in terms of, of fringe and indirect. Uh, so we've recalculated everything. Well, we recalculate every year, but the recalculation this year was truly from scratch, uh, something that we haven't done in five, six years. Um, so in here is just the letter of approval from the Department of, yeah, Department of Transportation approving the cost allocation plan, and these are what our rates are. And then our budget for the work program, which we bring to you next month, will reflect these fringe and indirect rates. Questions? Anybody? Yes, uh, this is Denny Gibbons. Is the fringe really 97.1? Yes. Um, yes. Can you tell us what all that covers? Uh, the fringe includes um, the, the full suite of benefit package. Uh, that would be your your social security, it would be your health plan, it would be your vacation time, um, trying to think of anything else in there. PERF is another one in there. Um, that, I mean, those are the highlights right there. I mean, I could send you the whole list of what you would like to see for the French rate. Hey, Pat, okay. those are federally approved, aren't they? Uh, yeah, this is approved by the Department of Transportation. Yeah, yeah. I used as to have the, to go through that at, at the Institute for Urban yeah. Transportation. As the pass-through agency, the Department of Transportation has the authority to approve the rate. And believe me, they went through it with fine detail. Yes. Penny, did that answer your question? Yeah, when, I, when I've done budgets in the past, usually... Um, Vacation is included in somebody's salary, not in the fringe. So we are, that would explain part of why it's, um, it's so much higher. Yeah, it, what I'll do is I'll, I'll send you the list of what's included in the fringe. Uh, Thank the, you. The indirect, the indirect is the um, indirect includes the director, uh, the assistant director position, which is vacant right now. And it also includes two administrative staff. Um, and, and that's all the indirect is right there. Uh, and then we have a lot of direct costs uh, in terms of how we spend our money in the grant itself, too. I'd appreciate a copy of that, too. Sure. I'll send that to you. Okay. I, I would as well. I, I think I'm kind of with, well, the fringe and indirect rates that we use at the university might refer to something else because these percentages are so very different from the the those rates that we use when we're doing grant uh, work. So I, I guess I've got it. For what it's worth, I, I worked at the university my entire working career, and we did a lot of consulting jobs, and our fringe rate was only like. 42 to 45 percent but when we went out for contracts with other businesses it was 120 150 percent so there's a wide variance okay depending here, upon what they include here it is i'm sorry i found the page uh it includes your social security which is at 7.65 percent 
uh, includes the PERF, uh, the PERF or Public Employees Retirement Fund, that's at 14.2% of the gross salary. It includes the Civil City Employee Benefits, uh, which is uh, dental, disability, voluntary life, term life, uh, no cost, basic life insurance, accident, death, long-term disability, and uh, Section 125 plan for pre-tax deductions and all of that. And the assumption here is that's a flat $14,274. It includes 12 paid holidays. It also includes paid time off. Paid time off is calculated by years of employment. And that's, that's how we calculate the fringe rate. I mean, I, I'll send that page out to you on, on what the assumptions are for all of that. And I, if I hear correctly, what you did, Patrick, is um, you were able to pay for extra positions through the indirect rate calculation, like an assistant director and such. So I'd be interested in... in that's, yeah. Yeah. Yes, that, that's part of the overhead. I mean, the fact that we're housed within within the planning and transportation department, those are indirect costs. All those salaries. Basically, it's needed. administrative costs. Yes. That can be assigned to a specific task. Yes, it's similar to a consulting firm where you'll have mm -hmm. principals. Uh, principals and the management team is usually an indirect or an overhead cost because they review the work that's done sometimes, or they, they're the ones that keep the ship afloat. Does that help? I, well, I'll send this out to you anyway on what the assumptions are. And this just went through an audit with State Board of Accounts uh, in December. Uh, so I know everything we're doing is correct and, and according to what. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, fiscal year 2022 Federal Highway slash FTA planning emphasis areas. Okay, the planning emphasis areas is the how we put together our planning work program every fiscal year. Uh, we receive usually in December of every year. Oops, scroll back, scroll back down, scroll back down. Yep, there you go, there you go. Thank you, thank you. Um, and these, and Erica can step in here if I'm overstepping my bounds, but we receive these planning emphasis areas from the from the U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Highway Administration, and the FTA both. And what they do is they direct us as the MPOs in Indiana. These are the areas that you will place special emphasis on. And the emphasis this coming year, which starts July 1st, is pedestrian safety because we've had an increase in fatalities over the course of the last five years nationally. Uh, it's an emphasis on resiliency. Resiliency is one of our performance measures right now, but resiliency will become much more important on the national level as we look at, as we finally acknowledge that climate change is an issue and that affects the infrastructure and affects all of our health. Uh, there's also an emphasis area on the metropolitan planning area and urbanized area boundaries. This is because of the census. Census data is late coming out. Normally we would receive census data for our urban area boundaries somewhere around March or April. It looks like it might be August or September before we have that. And those boundary areas, we will go through a smoothing process with the Census Bureau and with the state uh, and, and our federal partners to examine, to make sure that we're including, we're looking for substantial, I shouldn't say substantial growth, we're looking for growth. Uh, we're looking for five to 10% growth over our previous urban area boundaries. Uh, another emphasis area is the human coordinated, human service coordinated transportation plan, which I previously spoke about earlier in the meeting. And you have that link and you have the survey uh, that will be under development in March, April, and May. Uh, we'll be coming to the policy committee for an adoption on that in June after it goes through the Technical Advisory Committee and the Citizens Advisory Committee. And then finally, <laughs> there's an acknowledgement for micro-mobility. Uh, so that, which is something that Bloomington is, is familiar with in Indianapolis and West Lafayette, 
but not any of the other urbanized areas. So we're prepared for all of these uh, because it, our Metropolitan Transportation Plan, which was adopted in October of last year, had, took into account pedestrian safety, resiliency, uh, human coordinated trans transportation plan and the micro mobility. Uh, the metropolitan urban area boundary thing was something that we anticipated and now that's coming out since all of the lawsuits have, have fully ended with the change in administrations on the national level. So, I, does anybody have any questions? Anybody? Yes, is there any hypothesis about why the pedestrian uh, deaths are, are up? Is this because people are wearing headphones and not paying attention, or, or what is it? I don't know. I, I haven't looked at the national data. I mean, here in Bloomington, I know that pedestrian deaths are, are random. Uh, we had one downtown. Uh, well, no, we had two, two very downtown uh, deaths. And I don't know the cause because I haven't looked at that. I mean, pedestrian crashes are extremely rare, but nonetheless, they're always fatal. Usually, uh, they're, they're never ending in injury. They're usually a fatality. Same with bicycle accidents. Too. Um, I, I just don't know. I'll, I'll have to get you an answer for that and get back with you next month. Pat, I know. I know that our we're going to be looking at crash report data later in this meeting, but I'm wondering if indeed we've seen the same increase in percentages of deaths of pedestrians as we're seeing nationally. That I don't know. Um, Ryan will- Yeah, we'll be looking into that. Um, yeah. With the upcoming uh, crash report as well, what I, what I do know, looking at the data from uh, the past six or seven years, um, we had an increase in in the, those 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 deaths um, in the in the middle part of the decade, and that has gone down. But I think looking at the preliminary data, the preliminary raw data for 2020, unfortunately, I think we are heading back up, and I don't know yet if that uh, correlates to some sort of national trend, but we'll be looking into that. I see a question from Margaret. Yeah, I, uh, I appreciated the report on the st accident statistics, and I know it's a draft report, but I would like to have the data definitions and uh, the data sources and things like that and the raw numbers as well as uh, these summary charts. But uh, thank you for giving us that, the, the draft report. Sure, yeah, and we'll be getting into that um, in new business, but uh, all of this data can, can be found on the City of Bloomington's website under Be Clear. And all of that data can be downloaded by, by anyone. I was going to say a quick question for you. Sure. This kind of maybe jumps around a couple of these topic areas, but uh, freight or, or truck transportation planning, is there any areas that that would be a particular emphasis on? Uh, freight, freight was an emphasis for the Metropolitan Transportation Plan and also for planning emphasis areas last year. In behind, I should say behind the curtain, uh, behind the magic MPO curtain. We're still working on the freight issue. Uh, we, we will have, we will be assembling an advisory committee, a freight advisory committee of some type to look at freight issues for the entire metropolitan urban area uh, because that's a, freight is something that, that's been largely ignored for decades. Uh, we will also be working with uh, city and county council representatives and, and their legal staffs on looking at the ordinances, current ordinances for truck routing uh, in Bloomington and also in Monroe County in the urbanized area, uh, because those have not been looked at 
case we saw it hasn't been examined since 1952. Um, so that gives you an idea of how urgent it is that we look at freight. And particularly now uh, with just-in-time inventory and also with the reliance on, well, there's an emphasis here on market, market goods, bringing to fact agricultural goods and, and other forms with the pandemic itself, we, we will have an emphasis area on that. Great. Is that a question, Nate? Yes, thank you. I'll yes. note that, um, that Lisa Rich needs to leave the meeting, as she told us, and so I will be taking over and sharing the rest of this meeting. Thank you, sir. Does anyone have any other questions on the uh, planning emphasis series? I think my question's on the, the data, so I'll ask that later. The, the data are downloadable on, on the city's website under Be Clear. And I, I mean, we can send you the link if you'd like that. Oh, I'm sure I can find it. No, my question is more about the, since we were talking about pedestrian safety, is, is there any information in the crash report about the number of pedestrian related incidents? Is that, cause that's, and I didn't yes. see it in the summer, but it's in the data, is that right? Yes, right. yes, yes. Okay. It's yeah. still in draft in fact, form, so we're not totally uh, completed with that, but uh, that will be something that will be presented on in the future. And, and also, also okay. Kate, correct me if I'm wrong, Pat or, or Ryan, we've got several years of accident reports on our database on the web page, don't we? To give a little background. So if you want to do that, Kate, you can look those up. There's the yeah, I mean cool stuff. I mean the, the data is extensive going back historically. Uh, the state police form, the Indiana State Police is who we receive the data from. It's it's an agglomeration of all the data from all the law enforcement agencies in the entire state. Um, that data form, the, the state police reporting form changed in 2013. So anything earlier than 2013 is not comparable. Uh, you, you, it's oranges and apples, you can't, can't look at it that way. So our look is, is from 2013 on. Uh, prior reports emphasize three areas, I mean three year uh, rolling yeah. average. We now look at a five year average State of Indiana went from a three-year to a five-year average last year also. They're I'm, hoping, I'm hoping we can keep this until we actually get to new business and that we could finish with the MPO staff reports since we've all approved the agenda. Um, <coughs> can we, if there are no more questions about the actual planning emphasis areas, can we move on? to the UPWP. Okay, the plan, thank you, Sarah, for keeping us on track. Um, Unified Planning Work Program, we have a draft document which will go to the Technical Advisory Committee and the Citizens Advisory Committee um, one week from next Wednesday. Uh, the draft document itself, our budget is $10,000 less than, I'm sorry, 10,000, yeah, $10,000 less than, than the current year. Uh, nothing like a budget cut in a pandemic. Uh, it makes things a little bit tighter. Uh, so we, we've squeezed as much as we can squeeze out of it. Uh, but the one thing that we, we have to make room for is a request from Bloomington Transit for a fuel conversion study. Uh, Bloomington Transit will take delivery of two electric total electric buses in uh, this spring. And with that, it'll be an installation of what I would call an electric charging farm. Uh, and Bloomington Transit also wants to look at converting the fleet possibly to either 100% electric or some combination of compressed natural gas. In other words, they want to they want to leave fossil fuels behind, the diesel fuels behind, and go to what I would call a more green 
operating fleet. And, and so they, they, they've requested our assistance, uh, planning assistance for that. The most we can give them would be $55,000 out of last year's money. And then whatever is the residual from this year's money, which we will not know until July. So we're looking at allocating somewhere around fifty-five to hundred thousand dollars for Bloomington Transit for a special study for fuel conversion. Other than that, uh, we'll be following the planning emphasis areas, and we'll be within our budget. The budget is already complete in draft form, and we use every penny. The balance is zero point zero zero. Okay. This. Any questions? Anybody have? I, I could just add that uh, Bloomington Transit is expecting, you mentioned this spring, they're, they're hoping to get the two electric vehicles by April or at the latest May. And in the meantime, we, we actually have another board meeting next Tuesday, but in the meantime, we, we have approved a contract um, to install two electrical start, charging stations and it's pretty expensive. And one of the reasons is that whole Grimes Lane facility is on a structural concrete slab. And so they're gonna to have to go through and tear up a bunch of concrete and put in electrical wiring. Uh, it's, it, and it's, you know, it's gonna be complicated. Plus it, there's some doubt about whether, I think it's Duke that provides us they, yes. they don't have the ability at this point to provide much more electricity. So if we want to continue a conversion, it's going to be expensive. Okay. Yeah, and each, each electric bus is a million dollars per yeah. bus. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I don't remember how much we're paying for the installation of the wiring, but I think it's at least 200,000 just for the wiring and the installation. So it's, it's not cheap. Kent, has it been determined which, which route those two buses will be serving? No, Sarah, I don't believe we have a clue yet, but Lou may have some ideas, but I, I'm not privy to that. Thanks. Okay, then moving on, there is no old business. So moving to new business, we now come to the draft crash report findings uh, and all of those questions. So would you care to proceed with the draft crash report? Sure. Um, we presented this uh, data to, well, this draft data to the CAC and TAC last month. So we figured that we would share it with you all as well. Um, just to be clear, this is this is all in draft form at the moment, um, and uh, so we are we are treating it that way, um, or at least yeah, I am by uh, talking about it and presenting it here today. Um, so, with this first. Uh, uh, graph here is showing a positive sign that we are having fewer crashes per per year um, as of 2019. As I mentioned earlier, um, I'm just starting to get into the annual 2020 data as a as the year had just wrapped up. Um, so I'm interested to see if that trend continues. But as of the end of 2019. It is a promising sign that we are um, having fewer crashes in our county. Um, and this next one just shows the number of crashes by, by month and year. And this also correlates to the uh, previous uh, uh, graph in that it shows our number of crashes per, per month uh, going down. Um, as you can see, oops, let me scroll down, that in 2019, on average, 
we are having fewer crashes per, per month. Um, with October being the high point for the high month uh, for, for each, each year. Um, and living in Bloomington, we may be able to understand a little bit as to why that may happen. Um, as we have uh, a large influx of visitors and new drivers in our county, but um, that is just speculation at this point. But um, let's see. Moving on, um, crashes that result in incapacitating injury by month and year, as well as the total number of injuries by, by month and year are, are shown here. It's also good to see that on average in 2019, we are showing that there were fewer number of these incapacitating injury crashes by, by month on, on average. Um, in uh, 2019, it was a six year low in fatal crashes, which is good to see. However, as I was mentioning earlier, it seems that we might have a slight <laughs> uptick in 2020, unfortunately. Um, but that is still, like I said, being put together. Um, what is resulting in those fatalities are um, almost 50% of them are having a primary factor of running off the road to the right and driving left of center. And you can tell that there's lots of different uh, things that contribute or can contribute to a fatal crash. Moving on, these are our top 50 or so crash locations throughout the county with uh, 10th and the bypass ranking number one in 2019. And uh, second is College Mall and third. And tied for third place is uh, the bypass and College in Walnut and uh, Curry Pike and State Route 48. And that is everything that we have as of right now from what we were sharing with the TAC and CAC last month. I'd be happy to take any questions or suggestions or anything at this moment or we can have a discussion about it. No, I, I do have a comment. I think if I could, I can't roll back here, but <clears throat> that number one most dangerous intersection, State Road 45, 46 and 10th Street, um, that doesn't surprise me at all because that is the most poorly designed intersection I think I've ever seen, in, at least in this city. It's, it's designed for conflict. That's just my opinion. I, I happen to live east of there, so I have to drive through there a lot. I avoid it as much as possible, but I don't know what we can do about it now. You know, it's just, it's, it's a bad intersection. Well, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Um, as, as you can see, several of, of these intersections on this list are actually projects in our MPO's transportation improvement program. So hopefully some of these numbers, the redesign of, of these roads um, in our TIP, which is also based on uh, project selection criteria from our complete streets program and plan. Um, hopefully by following those guidelines that uh, we've adopted that these these numbers will will come down. Ryan, is that intersection that the bypass and 10th Street is no, that actually one, on the list for improvements? It, it's not, not that old. This this is an in dot intersection, right? Um, and that will have to be 
um, brought to us or that project is going to have to be brought to us, as far as I understand, from from Indoc. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe uh, Mr. Waldman might have more to say about that. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, we, we are looking at improvements along uh, 10th Street and 46. Um, I guess Stereo 45, 46. Um, that right now I think is a provisional project. So it is being studied. We do have engineering uh, being spent on that. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I, I had a question, comment sure. as well. Um, sure, yeah. Go ahead. I thought it was interesting um, that the intersection at Pete Ellison Range Road was so high on the ranking. Um, and I'm wondering if anyone has insight into why that might be. Construction of the hospital? Is, is that really? Yes. These, you know, I, one thing I want to point out is these these are frequencies, and they're not adjusted for traffic volume. If you look at it in terms of traffic volume, the rankings would change significantly. Right, and we're going to have those uh, right. frequency tables as well. I mean, you you could have a substantial amount of traffic going through there. And, and it looks like it's high, but in reality, if you if you adjust that for the traffic, it may be considerably lower vis-a-vis -vis other other locations. Well, for what, it, for what it's worth being somebody who lives east of that intersection too, I have to go through both that intersection and the one I just complained about. That one also is, is desperately needing some improvement. I think Kent that McDaniel just hit on something that is an issue of mine, and that that is that we are uh, building uh, frustration into the system, and we're designing an inefficient transportation system that uh, results in aggravation, and uh, in, in its design of not allowing traffic to flow. And I, that ultimately leads to aggression and accidents. And so we built it into our system by design. I agree, Margaret. It, I, the way I describe it is that it's designed for conflict. I agree. I agree. But one thing I wanted to point out too is the Stewart 45 Pete Ellis Range Road intersection project and that short stretch between the bypass itself and that intersection. That's a bench project right now with the Department of Transportation uh, where they didn't have the money. Uh, the program for that program, programming for that project will advance with new transportation improvement programs that will be coming out in the next couple of months. Yeah, and that'll be interesting to to uh, to see how how things change there, um, you know, I, I know we, I know we've got the the you know I, ideas for changing the intersection infrastructure, but we also are expecting some changes in traffic there it, as well, significant it, ones. It, yeah, it's a complicated intersection to begin with because you've got bicycles, pedestrians, public yeah. transportation, yeah. and automobiles. Oh my as I told the Department of Transportation on Monday of this week. Uh, and, and they're well aware of that. Uh, the design will acquire land require land acquisition off the north side mm -hmm. of the corridor. Uh, it will not be touching the Daisy Garden Farms area as far as I know. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Ryan, it's still your game. Yeah, is there anything else we would like to discuss about this? Um, otherwise, I'll hand it back over to Sarah.
Sarah, are you there? I lost a few videos here. We may have lost a bunch of people. Oh, there we go. Sarah's back. No, 13. There, no, okay, we're 13 back right now. Okay. Um, if no one has any further questions about the data and what we will be getting eventually uh, as we get more and more data into our crash report, we can proceed. Are there any topics by anyone for future agendas? Hearing none, uh, the Technical Advisory Committee will be meeting on February 24th at 10 a.m. The Citizens Advisory Committee, the same date, 20, the 24th of February at 6.30. Both of those are virtual meetings. And we will be back on March 12th at 1.30 p.m. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? So moved. <laughs> Second Sounds that. like it's been moved and seconded. So if there are no complaints, let's do it. Thank you very much.